brother and a, uh, two brothers together and the one's got a handful of sweets and I think the problem was to share it out equally. So that was that, that little scenario and their little problem and their worries is the sharing of the sweets. <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, all of us have trials and we have problems and everything is sitting heavy on us and um, the whole thing is to, to give it to God. Every single person has a problem, whether it's sharing sweets, running uh, in the army, or being stopped by the police uh, to get a radio license uh, ticket. It's all problems, isn't it? Yes. And uh, so we just want to put everything into God's hands, whatever you're going through. And I just pray that Jesus will be here and that he will anoint you and touch you today, that he will comfort you, that he will strengthen you. So let's just open up and pray. Father God and Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, we just come before your mighty throne. I just thank you so much for this ladies' group. I thank you so much for everything that you are doing in the ladies' group. We know that you are growing people. People came here and they were feeling really down, feeling really low. And it is only through your guiding hand that has lifted them up into different places and that they feel that strength that comes from you. And I want to thank you for that. I ask Jesus that right now you are amongst us and that you are touching each person here, that not one person will be left out, but that your anointing will be on each woman that is sitting here. I ask that you will inspire them, that you will direct them, that you will grant them the strength that they need for whatever they are going through. I pray that you will touch their hearts and their minds and that you will pour your holy peace upon them. And I just give you thanks and praise for that, that we can trust you, that you are here right now and that you are working with each one of us. I just ask that each woman will be blessed today and that you will grant them the, the wisdom to, to see what you are showing them. And so right now we, we sit and we lay down our burdens. We lay down our pain, we lay down our sorrow, and we push it across to you, and we ask, will you take this? Will you take this and allow us to sit uh, in a still way before your holy throne? And we just give you thanks and praise for that. In the mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. All right. Um, 
A little bit on Nelson. On a Friday night, um, we had the doctors had to go in and operate on his um, head. There was pressure. There was a blood clot that they had found, but the blood clot was um, uh, it was sort of like growing but spreading in his brain, and so they decided the neurosurgeon that he would go in and then drill a hole. Um, he said it was like a um, it's like a blowhole where it just shot out the blood. There was so much pressure in his brain. Um, so yesterday they took the drain out. Um, we had to get hold of a medication which is called, it's a smart med medication uh, for five days. It actually reboots all the, the memories, the thoughts, um, colors become more vibrant, smell becomes more vibrant, and it's to try and teach the brain how to, to function in a better way. So that's where we are at the moment. Um, we just keep praying. And obviously emotions get flung around. One minute you, you're hoping things are going right, and then you hope it's not, then it's not going right. And so there's this frustration of, God, what are you doing in our lives? Where are you? You know, we really need your help. And the whole thing is, I wanted to talk today about trusting, trusting God. How do we trust God? When things, no matter what happens, how do we trust him? And I sat and I must have spent maybe five hours trying to put my thoughts onto paper and what I was thinking and what God was showing me. And I think it was about nine o'clock at night. And I said to God, I just don't feel that this is anointed. I feel it's me trying to put what I want on paper. And I said to him, I'm prepared to start all over again. And so I pushed that aside and I re rehashed it with God. He's saying the same things, but in his way, not the way I wanted to. So I worked until one o'clock in the morning to do this. But that's what you've got to do. You've got to admit to God, I think I'm on the wrong track. I, I hear what you want me to say, but I don't know how to, and I'm making it worse by putting all my emotions and feelings and thoughts into it. So we trust God that he has put this together for us and that he knows best. I do pray that God will touch each one of you and that he's talking to each one of you personally. It, it's really important that you hear where you are and what, what you're going through. It's not, well, this is what Jenny says or this is what she's going through. No, it touches you whether you've got sweets in your hand and trying to share it, or whether you, you are dealing with traumatic stuff. Um, I know I, I am so grateful that Christine and her sister have come today. I didn't think they would be here. And I know that God will comfort you and strengthen you for being here while you are in your deep, deep mourning and, and sadness. So our hearts are with you, our prayers are with you, because um, Christine's mom died on Saturday morning, even though we were praying for, for her. But that's bravery. That's, yeah. God has encouraged them to come today. Mm -hmm. So I pray for strength, I pray for compassion, I pray for his comfort upon you while you sit here today. Okay. All right, so let's start. <laughs> okay. And I've called it, what glasses are you wearing? Now, we've all, some of us have got glasses. I've got sunglasses. These ones at the moment are not my real glasses. I should get my real ones next week. It's taken three weeks for them to make them up. Um, so these are like borrowed. Um, and some things I can't see and some things I can. But we, we, we put on different glasses. I mean, just now I was wearing sunglasses as I drove. As I read, I've got to put these glasses on. Then I take them off again. So we, we're looking through different things all the time. And um, uh, there was a lady by the name of Joan, and she said that she went to go and help some, some children's church. And she said there was a collage that was, was up, and it said, what glasses uh, are you wearing? And she said, that it's which glasses are you wearing? Are you wearing sunglasses? Are you wearing borrowed glasses? Are you wearing your own glasses that suit your eyes? How are you looking at life and how are you seeing things? And she said she started to, to ponder on that and think, well, how, 
how am I looking at things? How do I see things? And so she started to think about Joshua and Caleb. And Joshua and Caleb, they were sent in to uh, go and spy the land of the promised land of milk and honey. And so a whole bunch of spies went out. And Joshua and Caleb, they come back and they say, yes, we can do it. It is full of milk and honey and it is fantastic. And the other ten say, oh no, they are giants. This is too difficult. This is a problem. And that we are grasshoppers next to these giants. And so they were looking at the perspective with different glasses. Because Joshua and Caleb looked at it through God's focus, through God's eyes. And they said, yes, he will give us favor. There is strength in this and let's go for it. And the others were saying, oh, no, fear. And uh, they were discouraged. And they said, no, no. So they were looking through their own eyes of fear and discouragement. And they made a decision on which way to go. So in Numbers 13, Numbers 13. So really, which glasses are, are we wearing our own, you know, in our own lives with the, with the problems that we were going through with your life? Um, if there's good things happening, are you looking, which glasses are you looking through your own eyes or are you looking through God's eyes? So Numbers 13, 30 and 31. Um, it says, Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. Uh, but the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack the, uh, those people. They are stronger than we are. So you can see the two different um, sides that is happening here. Uh, in Numbers 14, 8 to 9, it says, If the Lord is pleased with us, then, we w- then he will bring us into the land and give, give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against God. And do not fear the people of the land, for they shall be our prey. Their protection has been removed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. So often we will look at a problem or we will have a trial, and which way are we looking at it? Are we looking at it through God's perspective and what God is doing? Or are we saying, well, look, God didn't do anything for us. And so it's a choice that we are making in our thought patterns. Or do we say, God, we trust you right now in what's happening. Okay, so when, let me talk about Gideon. We know the story of Gideon. And Gideon was about to lead a, um, an army of Mid- uh, against the Midianites. And he had a very big army. But God told him to ask those who were afraid to return home. So he had like 32,000 men. And so God instructs um, Gideon to say, whoever is afraid, better you go home. 22,000 left and went home because of the fear that they had, which left 10,000. And and God says, no, 10,000 is still too much. So go and drink at the water, and let's see the different ways that everyone's going to drink. Some will kneel down and drink like this, and others will kneel down and lap the water, um, like, like a dog would lap the water. And then God chooses the one group he wants. He says, they are alert. He says, I want those. And then it's 300. Now, if you look through your own eyes, you will say, are ah, we going into war? We need the 32,000. And God says, no. Look at it from my perspective. Let's take the 300 of alert men who have courage, who have strength, and who will move into into the war zone in the right way. If Gideon had not done that, the 32,000, maybe they would have made the right choice. Maybe they wouldn't because you were dealing with fear. And so fear would have have made them make mistakes in in that, that fight. And of course, God gets the glory, doesn't he? So always remember that whatever's happening, God will get the glory um, when he is working with us. So we can look at, well, Judges 7.3 tells us that, that now, Come, proclaim in the hearing of the people. Say, whoever is afraid and trembling, let him return and depart to Gilead. 
Uh, so 22,000 people returned, but 10,000 remained. So it is true that when we face a discouraging situation, we either look at it through God's eyes or our own eyes. So if you're looking at discouragement right now, which eyes are you looking at? One will give you strength and the other one will make you crumble. And so uh, we, we can then go on to make wrong choices based on our feelings of fear and anxiety. Now Lana was saying to me yesterday she was having a very, very bad time because she's got all of you praying and she's praying and she's drawing closer to God. But she said when she was driving, um, because the day before, uh, Nelson didn't recognize her. He said to her, do you, do I know you? Have I met you before? And that totally devastated her. She said as she was driving yesterday, she was crying, literally bawling her eyes out driving. And she started to get hysterical and she started shouting at God, where are you? Where are you? You see? And then she heard a voice say to her, my child, be still like a river. Be still. So God is saying to her, leave it in my hands. Be still. I'm working on things, but not at the rate you want it. Because they want him up and about and already back working. And so there's that frustration that's building within her. And so now, because of those words, then say to her, Nana, be still like a river. So a deep, deep river that moves ever so gently along. It's not rapids. It's just deep and slow moving for her to trust God. And so um, even though everything is upside down and the emotions are going, she then uses the glasses of be still like a river. Be still. And so she said that helped her to calm down because you just, you know, sometimes you want to force God into what we want. And so you just everywhere. And so you make mistakes. And so she will be meeting the doctor later on today. Okay, so we can then make wrong choices based on our feelings of fear and anxiety. In life, there are many things which come our way that cause us to feel afraid or discouraged. But how are we looking at these situ situations? How does the Lord want us to see them? And so we, we then say to God, in whatever problem you've got, whatever trial you've got, God, will you help me to see with your eyes? Help me to see what you want me to see and to understand. So there are times when we don't understand at all. Absolutely not. We will never know. It'll just keep moving along. All right, so Joshua and Caleb were wearing a whole different pair of glasses because their attitude was different. They looked and saw victory, opportunity, possibility because they looked at the situation through the Lord's eyes. So ask God if whatever you're going through, can I see this through your eyes? Would you anoint me to have the insight to see with your eyes, not with my human eyes and my human thinking and my human emotions. Let me look at it through God's eyes. They could, they could make the right choices as they, their focus was in the right choice. So with jo uh, Joshua and Caleb, they had the right decision because their focus was right. So if our focus is right, then everything comes into alignment. Okay, so if Gideon had taken the fearful men along, they might have made the right choices or they might have turned back in fear and discouragement. So are you making choices based on fear or discouragement or are you looking at the situation through the eyes of the Lord? Which glasses are you wearing? There's a little prayer here that says, Lord, I first want to thank you for the situation I'm facing. We don't often feel like praying that prayer. But Lord, I first want to thank you for the situation I'm facing because this is an opportunity for you to be glorified yourself and for me to build up in you. Give me the courage I need, the clear eyes to see the situation your way. Remove fear and discouragement from my heart and mind and give me true courage and faith. All things are possible with you. Amen. 
on into that. And so we then move on to the secret things of God. And sometimes they're confusing, aren't they? God will, will have a, a certain direction that he's taking things, and it's a secret to him, and we can't see it, and it's just confusing to us. And so if we have a look at Deuteronomy 29, 29, yes. and if somebody can read that for me, yes. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Yes, thanks, Miriam. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of this world. Yeah, so that, thank you very much. So the secret things belong to the Lord our God. There are things that he does in our life that we do not know. And when he does reveal things to us, then that's for us to have. And so we need to be very patient with God and ask, will you reveal to me what's going on here? So there was a man by the name of Paul Larson Robertson. Uh, when he began his Christian walk, he said he was very frustrated because physically, uh, in our human form, his business was to break things down, to understand them, to build them up. So, for example, if you've got a motor car, he, he could strip the car and then he could put the car back and he understood how the car worked. So that, that's an understanding. And he said what happened was he would get frustrated because he could, some of the things that are secret to God, he couldn't unpack to repack again, to have that, that deeper understanding. And so he was frustrated. And he said he, he always wanted to know how things operated. And he said he really struggled to work out what is God doing in my life, and he became frustrated in that. So again, it's the glasses, isn't it? Which glasses are you wearing? And he said that after a couple of years, he realized that he needed to change his thinking. He needed to change it uh, to make a choice to just believe God, just trust God, no matter what's going on, to say, I believe in you, I trust in you 100%. And then he had a plan that he knew what he was doing. It's, it's to say, I will leave this in God's hand no matter what the choices are, whether they suit our life or don't suit our life. We will trust him that he knows exactly what he's doing. I, I read a, um, it was a, a sentence that said, eternity will balance everything out. So when we don't understand here and we don't understand there, when we're in eternity, it will balance out and we'll have all the answers that we need. And so we need to trust him in everything. So he, he determined to do this. And then he said he was blessed with that scripture, which the secret things belongs to God, uh, but the things revealed belongs to us. Okay, So that was a significant point in Paul's faith journey, because we are on a journey of faith. But like most, and I would say all of us, <laughs> uh, he, he, he says he continues to be challenged at times by the things that happen in his life. So we are challenged by what's happening because we don't understand. Okay. And so we really need to say to God, I want your glasses, I want your eyes in this situation. So at the, those times we can be comforted and re reassured by the reminder that these things of God, which we can't even begin to understand, and we just need to make the choice to trust him. And it's just that, it's that. I'm going to trust you. I don't like what's happened. I can't see what's happening. I don't understand what's happening. But I'm going to trust you. And just by making that choice, things will change in the spiritual realm for you. So at such times, Paul says that he is also encouraged by a couple of scriptures in John's Gospel. And we know that Jesus, when he spoke to the disciples, he was telling them, you're going to drink my blood, and you're going to eat my flesh. And a lot of the disciples said, this is too heavy. We don't understand. And what did they do? They stopped following him because they didn't understand. You don't want to find yourself in that place. You want to rather be like Peter and the other the, the disciples, where they said, but you are the eternal son of God. And there is nowhere else to go but to stay with you. 
and to, even though you don't understand, stay with God and say, I trust you. I trust you through everything that you're taking us through. Also remember, God is always with you. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. Just as a thought pattern, Joseph, when he was thrown into the pit and he was sold into slavery, if you read those scriptures, I haven't got them today, but if you read those scriptures, it says, and God was with Joseph. Here he's in a pit, and God, God doesn't get him out the pit. He doesn't pull him out. He leaves him in the pit, and he gets sold, but it says God was with him. When he was in jail, he's praying to God, and God says, he tells us, and God was with Joseph. But in jail, well, why didn't he get him out? So a, a lot of the time, we're asking God, get us, get us out, get us, you know, we want to be out of this. And yet God is saying, I am with you. I'm holding you. Trust me. I'm here. And so that, I think that's how Lana feels. Get us out of here. Change things that, that Nelson just gets up and walks out of the hospital today. He, he's not doing that, but God is with us. Okay, so you put on those glasses that God is with you all the time. Okay. Um, all right, so that was the, the, the disciples. They chose to stay with God. The challenge for all of us is to trust God and to actively continue to believe. We really need to believe that He's with us, no matter what's happening in the country. I mean, last night some of us felt the tremor, the earth tremor. Some of us didn't. Uh, some people said they grabbed their children and they ran out of the houses. I just sat there and my whole couch was just moving backwards and forwards. I could feel the vibrations of the tremor through me. My house was creaking. My son, who's not far from me, says, no, we didn't feel anything. So I said to him, so why did, why did I feel it and not you? He says, I'm in the bubble of God. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for that and I'm not. <laughs> Um, and people were complaining, like Kim was complaining. Kim complained and said, no, it was actually Rob. Rob shouts at his daughter and he says to her, stop shaking the bed. And she says, I'm not shaking the bed. Amy jumps out of bed, looks under her bed, who's shaking my bed? <laughs> then they look outside and the swimming pool was moving, the water was moving like a bucket. So, you see, so there, some of us felt it, some of us didn't. And so it's to trust God in that, that we're actually okay. But really, that the earth just, it's like liquid, the way it, it rumbles and it moves. So, okay, that was a side thing. But yes, we need to trust God no matter what's going on. So the good news is that we don't have to do this on our own because the, His Holy Spirit is with us. They, they are always with us, no matter what we're going through. So however, we do need to do our bit and trust God. So that's the one thing he's asking. Please, will you trust me? Um, enough to submit everything of our lives into his life. So don't hold on to the things you've got and say, but uh, I, like, I don't like this, but I'll hold on to it because I've got to fix it. You can't fix it. Put it down, push it across to God and say, take it all. Take it all. And I believe that you are working in this situation. So we can pray and say, please help us to overcome our fears, our hurts and our pride, so we can fully trust in you and know that you are always with us, especially when we don't understand what's going on. Okay. All right. Is this helpful to anybody? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So God is a God of surprises as well. Uh, we can have a look at Mark four thirty nine. Mark four, verse thirty nine. Okay. Mark four, verse thirty nine. And he said to the waves, "Be still," <laughs> and there was a great calm. All right. So yeah, we've got Jesus in the boat. For the disciples, this was a suddenly moment. Suddenly. So they're in the storm, and they call out to Jesus, and then he quietens everything. So it's a suddenly moment. Uh, they had heard him teach in the crowds with great authority. And they had seen him heal the sick, 
They had seen him cast out demons. Um, but this was different because it was the weather. The weather was affecting them. Uh, suddenly there was a storm. And when they awoke him, suddenly he did the unthinkable. He stopped the storm. And he can do that in your life as well. He can suddenly stop the storm. <coughs> okay, so they realized that Jesus was just not an ordinary man and that he was actually sitting in the boat with them, that they must have drawn on, it must have dawned on them when they saw him address nature, arresting the wind and the waves. What an awe-inspiring moment. And God can do that in the trials that you have. Hopefully you're wearing the right glasses to see him miraculously working your lives. Okay, so they would have said, who is this man? Even the wind and the waves obey him. They questioned, could this have been the moment when, uh, from, from some of them, the truth of his divinity beca- began to dawn on them? We need to get to that place that he is divine. He is awesome. He is powerful. He has authority over everything that we are going through. But he might, like Joseph, leave you in that place. And you think, I can't get out of here. Yes, Jane, you want to? Uh, in the Bible, it no confuses me. There is a scripture, I don't see, you can't remember the scripture. It says, God doesn't slumber and sleep. Yes. But now here, he was sleeping on his people. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Okay. The, the sleep. <laughs> All right, Jane. Um, Jesus was human, and humans need to sleep and slumber because when we sleep and we slumber, our bodies are re-energizing themselves. So it's like we put ourselves off, and the battery is now working to yes. fix everything. So that when we wake up, so we recharge, and then we wake up. So Jesus because he was in human form, had to abide by the laws that we abide by. Okay. So even though he was God as well, he was in a physical body. But God, who is the omnipotent, omniscient, omni, all omnis, uh, he does not sleep and he does not slumber. Does that help you? Yes. Okay. (laughs) All right. I was given a really good um, picture from God last week yes. about the Trinity. Yes. It's like, yeah, you're trying to explain that Jesus was in human form, but we know that Jesus is God, mm. and then there's the Holy Spirit, so it's like these three things. And, mm. and so God showed me, it was, just, it was amazing for me anyway, three, three, like three dots, okay, they're all joined with an umbilical cord. Mm-hmm. So it's God, and then Jesus, and then the Holy Spirit. But they're all one because they join with the umbilical cord. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, well, the way I like to describe it, you have a candle, you have a wick, and you have a light. And that represents them. An apple. You've got the, the skin, the flesh, and the seeds. So you, that's the three, the three and one in all of those. But anyway, we're getting sidetracked, ladies. Yes. Shortly, I wanted to say, I don't know if we can say meta- metaphorically. Although Jesus was 100% human, he was 100% God. Yes. Although he was asleep, he was not asleep. Because they could wake him up and then he silenced them. <laughs> the trouble means he was God. That means that point that confuses her is still true even in when Jesus is asleep. He was not asleep. Because when he was fast asleep, he could just wake up from being a human sleeping and becoming God controlling. He had the authority. He had the authority. Amen. All right. Amen. So let's leave it there and move on. Otherwise, we go. <laughs> we'll go on another subject that we haven't prepared. <laughs> So out on the ocean waves, everything around them was beyond their control. So the same as the trials that you've got are beyond your control. You cannot control them. You cannot stop that wind. You cannot stop the waves. You cannot stop whatever is happening in your life right now. 
and there's nothing uh, nothing in their years experience. You might say, but you know, I've been a Christian 30 years. It's still out of your control. You have no control. But the fact that he was in the boat and therefore accessible in the hour of need, that's what we need. We need Jesus Christ in our boat and that in our hour of need, he will be there. Okay, so um, that must have been a great comfort to them. And there was a great calm once where there was despair. So you've got despair and then there will be a calm that comes. And it's Jesus. It's all about Jesus having him in your life, talking to him, uh, drawing close to him. Okay. Um, so sometimes in our turbulent waters of life, how wonderful it is to know the abiding presence of the Lord Jesus Christ is in our boat. Wherever you are, no matter what the trial is, whether you're standing on the road with sweets in your hand to separate and be equal, or whether you're running down the road because it's training and you're too heavy, He's there with you if you call out to Him. And He's there when you sit and then you're getting a, a fine. He's there with you. You ask Him to still the storm within me because the storm is inside. Okay. And so we ask Him um, through the challenges of life. He, he can still and most... He can still the storm no matter how furious the squall is or the storm is around us. He can still that. He scolded the disciples for their lack of faith because we need faith, um, but did not allow their shortcomings to stop him. So even if we lack faith, God is able to still step in and to help. So once we have glimpsed his greatness uh, and what assurance and comfort there is a knowing that we belong to him and that he loves us and he cares for us. It's to have that deep understanding that he really, really cares um, deeply for us. And the next one was uh, trust and obey. And it's from Job 13, 15. Job 13, 15 says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. So even if, if you are dying, or you're being killed, yet you will trust him, no matter how deep that trial is. In the last few months, God had challenged Jill Southerton Jones on this issue of trust. Do I totally trust him with every circumstance of my life? Do I give everything to him? Jill's circumstances have suddenly <coughs> changed in ways she, she doesn't like. Can we tr really trust God when we can't see the way ahead or when God says wait? And often our trials are we can't see ahead. Because just think if we could speak to Joseph when he was in the pit being sold. Joseph, it's going to be okay. It, you're fine. We've read the story. We know what the end is. You're going to be the ruler. You will make decisions for the kingdom. But he doesn't see that. Okay, then he goes into jail. No, it's okay, Joseph. It's going to be fine. I promise you, we've read the story. We know what the end is going to be like. And if only we could say that about our lives, mm -hmm. to say it's going to be okay. We've read the story. We, God sees what the end result will be. And so he's looking at it from that perspective. His glasses, his eyes. I know the end of your stories. I know how powerfully I'm working in your lives. And that's really what we're going to look at uh, with those glasses. So we need God's glasses on to see things. Okay, so trust is a choice we make. Of course, we don't trust a person we don't know. So what do we have to do? We need to get to know Jesus Christ. We need to get to know the Holy Spirit. We need to get to know Father God and have a deep relationship with Him that we, we can say, I, I trust, I trust wholeheartedly that no matter what I'm going through, God is in control of this. We need to know God and the faithfulness of his character because we can truly trust him. Trust him in everything. The more intimate your relationship is with him um, and the commitment uh, towards trusting him, the 
the tr uh, to trust somebody is to voluntarily make yourself dependent on that person. So it's like saying, God, I'm your, de I'm dependent on you. 100% I will depend on you that you will walk through this trial with me, this problem with me. That today you are walking with me and you will take me to take me through to the still quiet waters. Okay, so when we trust, we let some of the outcomes of our life go outside of our control. We have no control. There is no control. Give it to God. He has all control. Okay, not in a bad way, in a good way. So when we trust God completely, we come under his control. And he can work in the situations. So this can feel scary, but it's the safest thing to do with our lives. To say, God, I trust you 100%. The trust always involves us being vulnerable. We don't like being vulnerable, do we? And that's why we try and protect ourselves in what we're going through. So we want to trust always, uh, which involves that vulnerability. So there is no such thing as a costless trust. It takes effort to trust. The proof that we have trusted, trusted is that we make no contingency plans. And it's so easy to say, well, God, I'm going to put this in your hands, but I'm going to do this <laughs> over here. And maybe you'll use what my idea is. It's just to say, God, there's no contingency plan. I give it to you 100%. You will work it out, and I'm trusting. Okay. So we might not understand the storm. The proof that we have trusted, as I say, is that we make no contingency plans. If we set up a fallback position, it calls into question our level of trust. So don't have a contingency plan of what you're going to do in case God doesn't come through. Okay, so why do we find it so hard to trust? Trust depends on relationships. And that's why with us in the ladies group, as we learn to trust each other, we can, we can uh, lean on each other and be part of the body that supports and lifts up. But it really is that trust depends on relationships. If you don't know somebody, you won't trust them with anything. And our past, so trust depends on relationship and our past hurts and disappointments may have made us weary and cautious. Maybe we've been hurt by other women or other men and so we don't trust. And so we then bring it into our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And God says, no, trust me, believe me when I say things that my word is life and it will bring life into your, into your situation. Okay, so Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. Does someone want to read that? Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. Uh, thanks, Mandy. Keep your lives free from the love of money. Is that correct? Yes. Just keep going. Oh, sorry. And be content with what you have. Because yes. God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Okay. Amen. Thank you. So I will be allow me just to read this version. It's so good. He said, Let your conversation be without con covetousness and be content with such things ye as ye have. For ye have said. I will never leave you, I will nor forsake you, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, isn't it? So, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Do you trust him? Do you trust him today in what you're going through? That he will never leave you, he will never forsake you. And that... We can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. Amen. He is your helper in whatever you are going through. I will not fear what can man do to me. Mm. Okay, so our confidence is being able to tr trust God um, is, a, is a heart trust. It comes from the heart that I trust you, God. I trust you with my life. 
I trust you with my family. I trust you with my work and my business. I trust you to lead me, to guide me, to be with me, to heal me, to strengthen me, to have compassion and mercy upon me. I trust you as my helper today. So, so now is the moment to, to trust him in every way. If we don't trust God with some aspect of our lives, Jesus isn't Lord over every area. Trust God even in your time of death. Trust Him. Say, I give it to you. You choose. You do it your way. Not my way, not me trying to contingency plan for a youth drug or something, but just my life in your hands and I trust you. So Jesus isn't Lord of that life if you keep it to yourself because we have taken back our own control. It's about control. I will control the situation. And so then God can't work. So God, so God guards very jealously the integrity of our relationship with Him. We need to be really, really close. And with that, He guards it. So as an old hymn puts it, Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but trust and obey. Amen. Okay, and Psalms 9.10. Psalms 9.10 says, And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. He hasn't forsaken you in what you're going through or what we are, are trudging through. Because sometimes it gets messy in what we're going through. But... He has not forsaken you through those heavy burdens and heavy trials. Lord Jesus, please strengthen me when I'm afraid and unable uh, and enable me to trust in you. Help me in those times when I wobble to put, my, to put my hand in yours very firmly and know that you're utterly trustworthy. In Jesus' name I pray. Okay, and the last one that I wanted to talk about was 2 Corinthians 4, 8 to 9. And this is when you don't understand. We, we go through trials where we don't understand what is going on. We can't even see it. Day after day we trudge. Year after year we trudge. And yet we don't know the end. We can't see the end. We just know we are trudging through something that we don't like. We're trudging through something that we're praying and saying to God, please help us get out of this. I hate this. I don't know how to change it. And you give it to God and yet it still seems to trudge on and go on. And so you don't understand why is God, God not lifting this trial off you. So in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 to 9, someone like, thanks for me. In every way we're troubled, but we aren't crushed by our troubles. We're frustrated, but we don't give up. We're persecuted, but we're not abandoned. We're captured, but we're not killed. Great. And we're never abandoned by God either. Yeah, we're never abandoned. He doesn't abandon us in that time, even though you're frustrated. So there are times in your lives when you just don't understand what is happening to us or why it's happening. And I think that in our case with Nelson, it's like we don't understand because the, the accident could have been avoided. Uh, things could have been changed, but the accident happened. I, I believe he's changed forever. He'll never be the same person that went down that hole. He's going to be very different. And we don't understand why did this happen. Okay. So those answers we'll never have, or maybe we'll see it years later. Yes, yes Janet. I think I think that when this sort of thing ha <clears throat> happens, that we always have to remember that all things come together for good. For those who caught his purpose. This is part of his purpose. If we haven't if we haven't lost something. How can we show compassion and real compassion to another? So it's refining us. And yes, you go out one day and everything's fine and you think it's okay. But what might happen can change the entire direction of your life. Totally. But for the good. 
So if you can just keep saying to yourself, okay, when I am weak and I'm fed up and I'm having a glass of whiskey and I can't deal with all of this lot, okay, you're with me all the time, but just leave me for the moment because, and then come back to biblical, come back to the practical, that this is all about our walk and it's good for us in the long run. Because we, we, we're no good at all if we're smart and everything works for us. How on earth can we possibly stop next to the road to give somebody a lift if we haven't walked? Just yeah. yeah. I hear you totally. It's, but it's difficult. It is. It's difficult to get that understanding deep down. Yes, Jane? Can you proceed in taking this fact? Yes. Where it says we should be condemned. Yes. What we yes. But it's difficult. It's, it's yeah. difficult. Yeah. <laughs> I know that feeling, I should So, I can take that. Yeah, so, I mean, really, things that we are told in the Bible are very difficult. It's difficult to be content in what's happening. When, when you want to be doing something else, but you're stuck here, and various other things. It's so, easy to talk about being content when you've got a bank load full of money that's easily available. <laughs> but the first next door to you, you've got nothing. Mm-hmm. And needs food for their child. Yeah. Yeah. Not, so not, so not so easy. That's what I'm saying. It's very, very difficult. Very, very, very so, and it's to work those muscles to say, God, you're yeah. telling me to be content. But then to then pray into it and say, God, Help me to be content. Help me to focus with your glasses that I can be in that place of contentment and to, to still walk and do what God wants us to do in everything. So, yeah, it's, it's true. It, it's not easy to be content. Um, but the bottom line is is to learn to trust God, to say, I want to trust you in everything. You're asking to help you. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. So we, whatever we are needing, if you need compassion, if you need mercy, if you need to be comforted, if you need to be encouraged, if you need whatever your needs are, ask God and you'll see that he will come forward and do those things for you. Um, I obviously, the one thing I always pray for, my, well, ask God for myself, is encouragement because I... I get fired up with the encouragement to move forward. So God knows that. And if I ask it because I'm feeling that I need it, maybe I'm feeling self-doubt. And so then I say I need encouragement. God gives me that encouragement so that I can move forward. Um, And so whatever your need is, go to God and say, I trust you that today you will comfort me. You will help me to be content. You will strengthen me. You will work the pathway today that... The trouble that I have here is going to work out for the better. And so we look at that. Um, I can't remember the verse in the book where Paul says about contentment. He puts it this way. He said, Christ with contentment is great gain. Meaning, you can be able to be content with Christ. That's the only way. Philippians, but I can't remember what I'm looking at this. Christ with contentment is great gain. Yes. Some people are gaining, some are losing. Yeah, no, we want to gain. <laughs> All right, so we keep moving forward. All right, thank you, Francesca. Okay, so um, I'm just trying to see where to skip and, and miss because we're already there. How time flies, isn't it? We know the story of Job and all the terrible things that happened to him. And yet after hearing all the bad news, this is what he says in Job 1.21. He says, the Lord gave me what I had and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. We know that the end, we know the end of Job's story, but he didn't. He didn't know his end. He was just sitting in this mess. Um, of his whole life and if only we could have shouted and said Job it's okay just keep going it's going to be okay God's going to restore God's going to fix all of this for you Um, maybe that would have helped maybe but in the meantime he sat there in that mess 
And so if only we could see our stories and know that God is working and that it's going to be for the good. Okay, so he had to go through a long period of waiting and being misunderstood by his friends until finally God intervened. And um, we know from Isaiah 55, 8, it says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. So we need the glasses of God. This verse can be a real comfort when we are seeking to trust that the Lord is on our case and our lives are in His hand. God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't make mistakes. If you are in time, sorry, if you are in a time of darkness today and you don't know what is happening, just hold on and let God be God in your situation. Just let Him be God and just say, I want the glasses that I can see you and focus in on you and that um, you are in the situation with me, that you're walking with me. Tell him how you feel, just like Moses did. And then in the end, you will see that what God will do for you. He will not fail us, and but will fulfill his plans. Um, Okay. I don't know why I wrote that, but anyway. <laughs> All right, Psalms 31, 5 says, My times are in your hands. God knows what he is doing. So do you trust him? It's in your hand and it's in your time that you know what you're doing. So that's the trust that we have to have. I like Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. And you can actually decree it over your life. You can speak it out and say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. So you can say, I trust God or the Lord with all my heart. And it says, do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So acknowledge him as most high God. And then he, in, in your mightiness of who he is, that he's working with you. So the prayer says, Loving Heavenly Father, thank you that you are greater than I. You know what is happening to me right now, and I don't understand it. But I know you do. Please help me to trust you and not listen to Satan's lies. You are my refuge. You, uh, your will be done in me for your glory. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. guide you, he will lead you, he will inspire you in every way to learn to trust him and put his focus into your life. We don't understand everything. And so thank you for being here. Let's just close in prayer. Father God and Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, we thank you for today's teachings. We thank you that you are gentle with us and that you are compassionate with us and merciful. I thank you that you are going before every single person, that you are working in their lives and that they will give you glory and honor for what you are doing. And Father, we just ask that you will continue to walk with us, that you will allow your joy and your peace to reach our hearts and our minds and our souls and our spirits, that we are in alignment with you and that we can trust you that you are holding our hands and that we are holding we are holding your hand and you are holding our hand that we can sit on your lap and talk to you and discuss everything and anything that that is going on around us so we just thank you for that we just commit everything into your hands and we know that you will continue to be with the ladies this week and I ask that you will continue to show them the journey that they are on. If only you could give us a glimpse of what the end would look like. 
then I'm quite sure we would have smiles on our faces. Um, just give us the strength. I ask for your protection. I ask for your provision over every single person. And we thank you in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Thank you, Jacob. Thanks, Thank you. Give me your heart, give me your song, sing me with all Have your mind. Come to the fountain and you can be satisfied. There is a peace, there is a love, you can get lost inside. Come to the fountain and let me hear you testify. Into the Soon as you start